from the member from Cowichan Valley when he was talking about how nobody could give him a value, a definition for value for money. And I found that one of the strangest arguments that has been made in this chamber in a long, long time. You know, I can tell you one of the things that we, that I, I feel some anxiety about when we sort of start looking towards the next provincial election is that, is that I would like to know that voters are going to go into a ballot box in May of 2013 and have a sense that they have a choice. That they have a choice between two political parties who could serve as government in British Columbia. They have a choice of the BC Liberal Party, which actually has a good understanding as to what value for money means. And Mr. Madam Speaker, a, a, a government that has actually been prepared to look at new ways that we can find efficiencies. It's not just always about doing things the same old way that it's always been done. And then if there's a shortfall, let's just throw more money at the problem. Because Mr. Madam Speaker, what we have done on this side of the House as government is actually say, we're going to look for efficiencies. We're going to take advice from outside, whether it's from the Auditor General or from others who can guide us on how we can actually find more cost-effective ways of delivering the services that taxpayers expect from their provincial government. Madam Speaker, if I could wave a magic wand, this would be it. I would, I would produce 4.5 million copies of Hansard of the member from Cowichan Valley explaining how he didn't understand what value for money meant. And I would wave that magic wand and I would have one copy of that, trans that transcript delivered to every single British Columbian so that they could read that. Because I think, Mr. Speak Madam Speaker, the, uh, the voters in British Columbia uh, have to ask themselves which party can best deliver on a responsibility for how their taxpayers' dollars are spent, can make sure that they get the best value for their taxpayer dollars that they have. And Madam Speaker, I think if, if British Columbia voters read the Hansard from the member from v Cowichan Valley, they would be very, very fearful uh, if the NDP formed the, uh, the government in British Columbia at any time in the future. Um, I went through and I, I read some of the comments that were made uh, by some local government officials about the introduction of uh, the uh, Municipal um, Auditor General. And, uh, I, and I just wanted to share some of those with the House as I've, I've copied them out of some of the media reports. Um, you know, one is uh, actually coming from Surrey Councillor Marvin Hunt. And, uh, and he says, and I quote here out of this news article, uh, generally speaking, we don't have a problem with it because ultimately it's a third party to come in and look at what we're doing, how we're doing things, and make sure we're doing it in the best possible way. You know, I think that's a really good, simple, plain language. Everybody in British Columbia can understand what that means. And that's exactly what is meant by a municipal auditor general in British Columbia. He goes on to say, we hope that we're doing it in the best in the best way possible and if we're not we're glad for someone to come alongside us and say here's how you could do it better and I think that's the kind of spirit that we should welcome this new office in British Columbia you know the um, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business in their 2011 report on municipal spending um, showed that uh, actually the spending levels at municipal at the municipal level has grown faster than at the provincial level now should taxpayers be concerned about that? Well, I pay municipal taxes, and yes, I am concerned. I would like to make sure that my municipal taxes are kept as low as possible, but still deliver the services that I expect for, uh, for my family. Uh, but the amount of money we're, not, we're talking about is not a trivial amount of money. We're talking about a total municipal operating spend in British Columbia of, uh, well, in 2009, which is the number I've got at my disposal here, uh, was a total of about $4.4 billion. That's a lot of taxpayers' dollars. And I think that uh, we have uh, an obligation to help facilitate the discussion, help facilitate the analysis that ensures that taxpayers are getting that best value for money uh, for those dollars as they are spent. Now, there were some other comments that I, I came across uh, as well in other news articles, and I think I've heard this from some of the members on the other side of the House. Um, and this is one, I'm not going to name the, uh, the municipal uh, leader who, who said this because I, I, um, I'm, I'm then going to go on to uh, 
to uh, totally fundamentally disagree with what he said. Um, he said, unlike senior governments, municipalities are for forbidden by law from running operating deficits. Now, that's an argument I've heard from some of the um, opposition members as to why we don't need an Auditor General. I think when people make those kind of comments, and when members of the opposition make those kind of comments, what that demonstrates to me, they haven't got a clue what an Auditor General's role is. They haven't got a clue what the role of this local government Auditor General will be because it's not about whether or not they can run a deficit or not run a deficit. That has absolutely nothing to do with the function of an Auditor General in this context. So, Madam Speaker, what the Auditor General's role is, is whether a government is running a deficit, is balancing their budgets, or running a surplus, it really doesn't matter. What it's about is making sure that the taxpayers are getting the best value for the money that are there. You know, here's another one. It says, uh, they don't, uh, personally, I don't see a lot of value in it, uh, this one official said. Our books are audited every year. Um, our, our books are audited every year. Well, again, and I've heard this come up from members of the opposition as well. That, too, has nothing to do with the role of an auditor general, whether it's at the federal level, the provincial level, or at the municipal level. Because yes, of course, they have auditors that come in and audit their financial statements and make sure that money has not been misappropriated in, the, in, the, in an accounting sense. But this goes way beyond that. This goes way beyond that, that very narrow auditing function that of course we expect of, uh, of governments at all levels. But uh, Madam Speaker, as has been, has been pointed out uh, in the explanation of this position, the office is designed to provide neutral, non-binding advice. It is something that can shine the light of day on best practices. You know, we've got, um, I, I don't know what the number is of the number of municipalities in British Columbia today, but we have uh, hundreds of municipalities, obviously. And we have some municipalities that I know are doing phenomenal work when it comes to finding the best ways of delivering services to, to, uh, to their, their citizens. We should be identifying those best practices and we should be highlighting them and we should be celebrating them and we should be making sure that other municipalities around the province can, under, can, can appreciate where those best practices are and how they can emulate them in their municipality. Now, I know that we've got examples across Canada of other uh, municipal auditors general. Halifax has one, for example, Toronto has one. Um, in uh, Quebec municipalities, uh, over 100,000 people are required to have an Auditor General. You know, that's a fairly, you know, when you talk about the cost, is that the most cost-effective way of actually delivering this very important service to municipalities, where every municipality has to engage an Auditor General uh, for each and every municipality? And I would argue that the approach that is being taken by this government, by saying we are going to have an office of an Auditor General for local government that's going to serve the entire province is a cost-effective way and in fact, Madam Speaker, I wouldn't be surprised if this becomes seen across Canada as being a best practice in itself and perhaps an Auditor General is going to identify that as a best practice in the future of having